Hi, my Love name is Matthew E. O'Neill. Hi, my name is Matthew E. O'Neill, the number one ranked editor for Everipedia.org. Everipedia.org is an online internet and that out of Santa Monica, California. I have a bachelor of science from Colorado Christian University. I graduated in 2001 with a Bachelor of Science in Computer Information Systems Management. I also was an amateur boxer in the, in the, in the late 1990s, leading a member of the World Class Athlete Program. Uh, t- tonight, Today's episode will be about uh, Justin Mayweather. Justin Mayweather is Floyd Mayweather's half-brother. They have the same father, Floyd Mayweather Sr. Justin Mayweather was currently six wins, zero losses, with five KOs. Justin turned professional in 2013. Justin was born in 1987, so as of 2020, he's 33 years old. He last boxed in February of 2020 in Jamaica, where he scored a victory. Justin has fought primarily in Mexico, in Tijuana, Mexico, where he's able to attain a record of six wins, zero losses, and five KOs. He's out of the tutelage of Greg Fredo. Greg Fredo is a boxing trainer who's also well-versed in martial arts. Greg Fredo has a, is very experienced, but not just his arms and his legs, and a, and a very experienced kicker. Greg Fredo trained Justin Mayweather at the world-famous Las Vegas Mayweather Boxing Club. After the death of Roger Mayweather, Greg Fredo took Roger Mayweather's place, and currently Justin Mayweather works the pads with Greg Fredo. There's been plans for Justin Mayweather to advance his career over the, over the next year and a half. Talks have been possibly fighting in, in Africa and possibly getting a world title fight by the WBO. Justin Mayweather fights in the super welterweight division. He did not have a very experienced amateur boxing career, but a boxing at the in his twenties when he be, when he became aware that Floyd Mayweather Sr. was his father. Justin Mayweather did not know that Floyd Mayweather Sr. was his father until until he became in his late 20s, or sometime in his 20s. Hello. Hello. Hi, is this Greg Fredo? It sure is. Hi, Greg. This is Matthew E. O'Neill. I'm the number one ranked editor for Everipedia. Um, right now, you are Justin Mayweather's trainer? Yes. And how do you think that his career is, is progressing at this stage? Well, you know, we were on the right track before the pandemic hit. Uh, that kind of slowed us down. But right now, we're going to have a couple fights to get the rust off. Hopefully we're going to do four to get him to ten and zero, oh, and then I want to put him in a title fight in the WBO in Africa. I talked with the uh, the commissioner in Africa, and he said once we hit ten and zero, oh, let let us know. We'll set the fight up. Now Justin, you trained by Roger Mayweather, and Roger used to hold a yeah, pass for him. How was your path? Yeah, he did a lot with Justin. Well, he did. You know, he did. He did with. He worked with everybody there at TMT. He worked with Jeff, his dad, senior, and Roger. But he favored the pad worker Roger because it's all three of them have different styles. You know, my Floyd Senior is more of a like an explosive uh, punch and, and catch combination. Roger's constantly making the fighters move and catch. And then Jeff is a lot of defense. You know, he goes after you and throws punches and makes sure your defense is sharp. So. I've managed to combine all three of them because I've worked at TMT for six years. I was originally taught by Roger years and years ago. And then in 2014, I visited the gym again, and Roger and I recapped all the science of the pad holding. 
and Floyd took me under his wing and taught me some of his drills. So now Justin gets the best of all three of them. Is, not saying that I'm as good as any of those three guys. Okay, yeah, not saying that I'm as good as any of those guys. I mean, I still got a lot to learn, but you know, I've got the idea and the concept and the science down. So it's and it's helping Justin. He's familiar with that kind of pad work. Is Justin using the the Mayweather shoulder roll as part of his defensive tactics? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, he's all he's, he's he's you know that's that's it that's that's part of the family. It's in the genes. <laughs> oh. And we get a lot of people, you know, I get a lot of people saying that shoulder roll doesn't work. A lot of these trainers out there, I've watched some of the YouTube videos that say uh, watch Roger Mayweather's workout by other trainers where they've tried to break it down and explain it. I mean, some of them are good. Some of them are doing the shoulder roll completely wrong. You know, they're leaning into the overhand right position when they roll, which is not the way it was meant to be. You know, Floyd Jr. used that shoulder roll to pretty much jam that right hand coming in. You know, he would, he, would, he would block it, and then he can get inside and fight. And a lot of people don't understand that. And it's easy to watch a video and try to figure out the pad combination, but what is the trainer trying to accomplish in that particular drill? That's the thing that they're missing. As far as uh, Justin's outdoor running, uh, do you do a lot of that as part of training concepts? Yeah, you know, he's one thing about, you know, I've trained a lot of 30 and 40 fight fighters, and I tell them all the same thing. I can't make you a You're already a fighter. Like, you know, I mean, I can watch your conditioning. Maybe I can give you some tips on how to train different ways. But pretty much Justin is Justin's Justin. He's in that gym two times every day. His work ethic is unbelievable. You know, I've watched him do 10 rounds of mitts with me, then go on the bag for 22 minutes straight. You know, so he was a little heavy because of the pandemic. We got, uh, he was at, he went up to about 168. We got him down to now around 160. I mean, we're going to fight at 154. So he's on track easily. I want to try to get him a fight maybe next month. Right now, uh, Justin Mayweather has six wins and zero losses with five KOs. His last match was in Jamaica in February 2020. Uh, as far as yes. the sparring sessions, do you prefer using the large gloves in sparring, or do you, the spar gloves, the 16 to 18 ounce gloves, or do you like to use, use regulation gloves? What kind of gloves do you? No, we will, or in the I like gloves? to go. Yeah, I want to go 16 for safety too. And you know, the other thing that I'm that I do a little differently than, and I get a lot of controversy from it. I do it a little differently than other trainers. I like to spar the week of the fight. Most trainers spar two weeks before and then just keep the conditioning up. But, you know, what I've experienced is if you can get some decent sparring without getting killed up until the fight, you're just sharper when you get in the ring. I agree. I, I boxed in the late 1990s, and I, I beat Jeffrey Knock, and he was on LSU National Baseball Championship team in 91 and 93. I beat him by a 10 count. In order to beat Jeffrey by a knockout, I used the sparring right before the fight with the big gloves on. And I think that helped me a lot to score a stoppage if you spar yep, in the lead exactly. up to the, to the event. Yeah, you know what? I, it's just like football. You know, Matthew, when you see football and you see them come around playoff time and everybody's fighting for that bye week, the team with a bye week, when they go back in and in, in play the playoffs, the speed of the game has gone faster. And it takes them at least a quarter or two just to catch up to the speed of the game. I think that's the same philosophy when you're sparring. If you're constantly sparring, like you said, that's probably was was the difference in your fight because he took it easy that week and you sparred. Again, your name is Greg Fredo. Do you have a martial arts background as well? Yeah, yeah, you'll love this one. I started when I was 10 years old with a, uh, a style named Shotokan Karate. And the instructor held me back for six years till I got a black belt. You know as well as I do, it doesn't take that long, okay? And, uh, so I was 16 years old, and I went to a high school football game, and I got my butt handed to me by a boxer in a fight. And I, 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 you know, I said, wait a minute. <laughs> Why isn't this working? Six years of training. I discovered that the trainer 
had false credentials. So at that point, when I was 16, I was living in Pittsburgh. I, I called my third cousin in California because, you know, I was a Bruce Lee fan from the very beginning. I found out that he had studios there, so I joined. And at that time, you had to sign a death waiver, and you had to have a black belt just to get in the studios. And I, so I studied uh, the JKD system, you know, with Richard Bastilla, and then I went to Danny and Asanto and moved uh, up to San, San Fernando Valley with Cass Magda to finish my studies. And I learned more from the Bruce Lee JKD concepts than I did six years of the, what I call pajama karate. But my biggest thing was boxing. I still had trouble with boxers. Even when we did Wing Chun, Bruce had pro- tro- problems with boxers when he was doing Wing Chun. He had to modify it. So that's why I, I was challenged in 2014 to go back in at the Mayweather's gym. And they said, you know, the guy told me, if you think you're all that as a trainer, then you go into Mayweather's and if they don't throw you out on your ear in a week, then I'll believe it. Well, it, you know, six years later, I'm in there, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to sharpen up my boxing training so that I can maybe bridge the gap between these MMA and boxers so that some of these these strikers and MMA and UFC people can box a little better because their boxing skills are terrible, and MMA trainers are teaching them boxing. They don't know anything about boxing. Yeah. Now, Justin Mayweather is Floyd Mayweather's half-brother. They had the same father, Floyd Mayweather Sr., um, you worked right. with Floyd Mayweather Sr. at the Mayweather Boxing Club. What have you learned from him? I learned the, the different types of drills that he that he does. Like, if you've ever seen him do the drill with Andrew Tabidi, I do that with Justin all the time. That's the explosiveness. Sr. was, you know, he's, I mean, my opinion, the verdict's still out between who was the fastest because Roger's gone, but Roger, Jeff, and, and Floyd, my opinion, Floyd's the fastest with the jab, and he's more explosive. So that's what he basically taught me. He said, look, you're going to get a lot of criticism because a lot of these people are going to go, nobody stays in the pocket that long with all those combinations. That's not the point. The point is is to get the fighter speed up. And, and when you do explosive drills like that, I have 30 or 40 fight fighters that can't do three minutes of that straight. It's so intense. So that's the biggest thing that Floyd Sr. taught me was it's explosive. You gotta, And then you change your rhythm up when you're making your combinations, your punches, so your opponent can't figure you out. So that's the biggest thing. You know, and Jeff, Jeff, God bless him. I mean, that guy, I think he just, he could take any pro in that and work him. And he said, he'll, he'll tell you, watch. He'll hit him, hit him with a jab, hit him with an uppercut. He always manages to get some hit in somewhere. So, you know, that being said, you combine that with Floyd's workout, you know, you got your defense, you got your explosive offense. Okay, Greg, uh, this is a 15-minute program, and the time time is up. I, again, my name okay. is Matthew E. O'Neill, and I'm the number one ranked ed- ever, editor for Everopedia.org. Everopedia is an internet encyclopedia set on Santa Monica, California. I would like to thank you for being on my show. I appreciate the time. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, bye-bye now.